songwriter, we had the opportunity to talk to John Roberts over Zoom audio. You'll definitely recognize John Roberts' voice. He is the voice of Linda Belcher on Bob's Burgers, but he's had an incredible music career as well. He was actually in the car driving from the Bob's Burgers film that's coming out uh, in the car when he did the interview, so that was pretty cool. He talks about growing up in New Jersey and how he got into music. He went to acting school at 17 in New York, and that's where he really got into electronic music and creating his own beats. He talks about starting his band and, and being in the band OptiGrab. And they had the opportunity to play with huge artists like Scissor Sisters, who he has on the new record, and Blondie, Debbie Harry, huge, huge fan and huge supporter uh, of John Roberts, and eventually became a good friend of his. John talks about being asked by Debbie Harry to, to contribute and sing on a Blondie record, which is huge. He tells us about putting out that first EP with OptiGrab, how his acting and comedy career kind of took over quite a bit, and uh, he had to put music to the side a little bit. And in 2017, he decided to kind of take another stab at music. He put out an EP. He talks about that. And, of course, his brand new record, Lights Out, which features Debbie Harry, Beth Dido of Gossip, and Baby Daddy of Scissor Sisters. Like I said, this interview is done uh, over audio because John was in the car driving home from... <laughs> recording for the Bob's Burgers film, but you can listen to it on our YouTube channel and Facebook page, as well as anywhere you listen to podcasts. But you can also check out our past interviews and videos on our Facebook page and YouTube channel as well at Bringing It Backwards. It'd be incredible if you subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and our new TikTok at Bringing Back Pod. We'd appreciate your support if you follow and subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. We're bringing it backwards with John Roberts. Yeah, so this is all about you and really your journey in, in music. I know you obviously have a huge career uh, in, in acting, but I want to hear about how you got into music and I want to talk about your new record. Thank you. Yes, yeah. me too. I'm very, very excited and um, it's coming out any minute now, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's, it, it's um, right, it's what do you want to know? Here. <laughs> Well, basically, uh, let's start with the with yeah. the beginning. I did read. I did read that you're from uh, New Jersey. What was that like growing up there? Well, it was. Uh, I grew up in Edison, New Jersey, and uh, it was a great place to grow up. Yeah, um, it was a lot of uh, the music was. You know, um, I mean, it's the '80s, so there was a lot of good, really good dance music. Mm -hmm. obviously Prince, Madonna, all that stuff. Um, and then there was freestyle music, which I loved, um, which was very Miami and East Coast, uh, Latin, uh, you know, kind of all these awesome beats, like people like Stevie B and stuff like that. And uh, everyone had big hair. <laughs> it was a vibe. It was a vibe. And we would cruise in our, our Camaros and uh, Z-Rock, you know, uh, I-Rocks and uh, cruise down the shore um blast that music it was pretty hysterical um <laughs> and then i and then i moved to the city when i was 17 because my, my father always lived on the upper east side so i was very familiar with the city <clears throat> from when i was a kid and uh and then i just moved in on my own to go to acting school um when i was 17 and uh i did two years of that and um then i met someone uh who introduced me to digital sampling and uh house music Mm -hmm. um electronic stuff and started to go to raves and things like that um and uh just kind of tinkered around for a long time on my own um with equipment and stuff um kind of spinning my own wheels a little bit but uh always, in that, fun. <laughs> always in that electronic realm or did, did you play guitar or piano or anything like that yeah, mostly all electronic. I had MPC samplers and uh, sampling was big then too, but um, I would just sa sample snippets of things and then make beats. And um, and then I my first band, OptiGrab, um, we used the MPC and keyboards and stuff like that. Um, and that was, that was fun. We made a fun EP and uh, people really loved our live shows. We had really good energy and... Uh, we would play with like Scissor Sisters and Go Go Bordello and uh, wow. Toilet Boys. 
Yeah, and we we toured with Blondie. Um, yeah, we I did read that. That's, that's incredible. Tom Tom Club. Yeah, we played we played we played great gigs. Bowery Ballroom, you know, Mercury Lounge, all all the really great places. And uh, and then you know we were, we're all friends still, but we decided you know it wasn't you know what we wouldn't want to continue anymore. So we just kind of stopped doing that. And then uh, it wasn't until I started to work with Big Black Delta a couple of years ago that I got uh, started to write my own songs with him. And, uh, and then, um, yeah, now I'm on this next album with junior. Uh So it's a lot more songs. I mean, we had uh, three songs on that first EP with big black Delta and this is like 12 songs. So um, we, we did a lot more time in the studio and it was really like a really great process and, uh, just kind of came out, came out, and yeah, the songs I've heard are incredible. I, I love it. Oh, thank you, thank yeah, you. I, I did notice from that the first three song EP that you put out to this one, at least the songs I've heard, you had a lot of guitars in that first one, and then this one it seems like a lot more on the electronic realm. Yeah, Big Black Delta. Uh, I mean, he's you know John Bates. He's super talented musician, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, it's got more of like a rock feel. Definitely on looking, but uh, Junior, I love his, you know, house and you know he's, you know, we actually went to the same raves and things like that together. So, oh, right. uh, we just have so much fun with making, you know, when he's making those beats and uh, it's really easy to sing over something, create a melody and uh, a chorus and a verse type of thing, um, you know, just with his him starting a beat or whatever because it's always mm-hmm. exciting and fun to me. So. Um, yeah, I love working with Junior. I'll probably work with him again on the next stuff. Awesome. But uh, bring in more guitar and live instruments and uh, backup singers because <laughs> I love uh, I love having backup singers. And I performed at school night, uh, you know, before COVID. Uh, and that was that's in L.A. It's a great night. It's uh-huh. across yeah, from the Capitol it. building. It's really great. And, and it was super fun. I had a live drummer and uh I'm looking forward to rehearsing with, you know, with him again and bring in the singers and, and, you know, get the live show going as soon as possible. Amazing. I want to back up real quick, if you don't mind, um, with, and talk yeah. about, for a second about OptiGrab. Yeah, you were the, you were the front guy in, in, in that, in that band, right? Well, yeah, I guess you could say that I was kind of the founder and yeah, uh, made all the beats, but we, we were, we also were a uh, ensemble as well. So mm-hmm. um, Tracy, we all, you know, Tracy Murphy, who's, you know, a dear friend of mine still, super talented. She, she's got a great voice. So, you know, her on the chorus, like parking lot or stuff like that, uh, uh, you know, she would be the considered probably the lead in that song. It, it kind of depended on the songs. And okay. um, we, we, each, we, we gave each other some moments to, you know, shine all of us individually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And so with, with, uh, with that band, you guys like toured and you had a, you, you talked about having an EP out and, and, and touring. I mean, that must have been something you were taking yeah. pretty, pretty seriously. Yeah, we were. And, you know, we were already in our 30s or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there was an electro clash scene happening. You had Scissor Sisters and, you know, they were all coming up and, um, you know, we're all playing these electro clash shows, which was really fun you know, in the early aughts in Brooklyn and Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and there was a scene, it was, it was cool. And uh, then it just kind of faded away. And, you know, we all moved on to the next thing. Was, were you juggling acting along with, with the band? Yeah. Well, what it was, I was doing my live show in the East village with all my wigs. Okay. (laughs) And (laughs) I, I was, that's where I developed a lot of my characters. I'm Bob's and, you know, definitely Mm -hmm. my mom character and stuff, but uh, I was doing a show on Avenue A and 13th street. And, um, but at the same time I was also writing music and, you know, so I always had the two things going on, but comedy is really what, um, what took off. Mm -hmm. And so obviously, you know, I had a manager for comedy and, and the music just kind of, uh, you know, went on the back burner for a second, but Bob's has been so musical and fun. Sure. Uh, you know, it's your musical it, role. Yeah. <laughs> <In it. laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, which is great. But, you know, I, I don't want to sing like Linda forever uh, <laughs> or I do. But, uh, you know, I want to sing like me, too. You know, sure. Um, 
and it's it's such a it is i know it's a total you know 360 and and so, you know you're like what linda's singing dance songs you know i'm, I'm I may, maybe it is a hard sell <laughs> but uh you know i think as long as the songs are good and i think that's most important right i mean you wouldn't even i didn't even know that you when i was listening to the record aside from reading your bio and stuff you wouldn't really you wouldn't i didn't hear the the linda in it until like you you really tried to pay attention to that but i mean if you heard the song it just sounds like a rad record yeah, no, we don't, you know, Linda's, Linda's not, Linda had to work that day. She's right. Right. <laughs> she wasn't invited to the studio. Of course. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a buzzkill, you know, it's a, sure, sure, <laughs> no, sure. I love, I it's it. No, it, it's uh, you know, it's obviously just trying to show more of what I can do than, you know, mm -hmm. just imitate my mom kind of thing. And do right. Linda, so, and, and this is something that I've, I've always loved music, you know? Um, so, it's so nice to actually have a full album that I finished because uh, it takes a, it takes a lot to find people to work with or just get the confidence back to do it or, um, you know, not let the dream die of like just wanting to have, you know, a record. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, you have to really push through it, especially at my age too. And, you know, uh, it's not very conventional, but I really don't care because um, it's fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you're great at it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm you curious know. to know, like, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I was just going to ask you, I mean, you said comedy was kind of, you had a manager and stuff with comedy, but you're always doing music. When did, like, was comedy kind of your main focus? Like as a kid, were you doing like stand up, or were you performing like more like music based stuff? I had, uh, this Pee Wee Herman imitation going in high school that like <laughs> just made my, you know, existence. Cause I was really nerdy and not, not a lot of friends. We just moved to like in middle, middle school. So um, high school, I got to do like this talent show as Pee Wee Herman. And, and I found like the theater in high school. I know it's, <laughs> but I, I, I really did find like my place there and uh, you know, it was singing and, and all that kind of stuff. But uh mostly the acting because I went to acting school for college and it wasn't a musical school so that kind of came afterwards um on my own once I graduated and started playing around you know and I was still I graduated I was like 19 years old so uh still pretty young and yeah. I, I stopped doing stand-up though um which I had been doing from like 16 to just around then um would go do stand-up New York and some other clubs would let you bring in uh, like five audience members and you could do an open mic thing. Um, and that was great for, you know, just, just for my confidence mm -hmm. with that. But uh, I didn't really perform after the Academy of Dramatic Arts because I, I wasn't really fitting in with the acting stuff of the early nineties, like soap operas and, <laughs> sure, <laughs> um, and I didn't really know myself yet either. So it didn't really make sense to me. Um, music was always much more interesting way to express my individuality and, uh, and what was going on in my, you know, kind of tell your story a little bit more or just, you know, make good fun dance music, which I love. Right. Since I was a kid. With, with, um, OptiGrab, when did that start? Like, was that later down the line or? Yeah. OptiGrab started like, <laughs> uh, right after nine 11, <laughs> oh, wow. we, I, I was in LA for like a year uh, and I was like a valet supervisor and I had like a bad commercial agent and it was, it was a nightmare. Um, I drove a Miata. It wasn't pretty, but, uh, <laughs> but now uh, that then I, you know, we, I moved back and we had uh, me and Tracy started playing around with my sampler and then we got Rick involved and, uh, and our friend gave it to Debbie Harry. She, she loved it. Super supportive. Um, and asked us to do some, you know, tour dates with Blondie. And um, yeah, we just had, we got a lot of love from Village Voice and, you know, um, we had a, a little buzz going, so it was exciting, but uh, it wasn't sustainable just because it wasn't ultimately what all three of us wanted to do. It's more just friends goofing around. Um, and I didn't really feel like it had, you know, it wasn't too deep at all. So it was just playful and fun. And uh I wanted to either go a little deeper just probably because my sexuality and I think that pushes me to make music in a weird way, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, it's house music is very 
LGBTQ, you know, uh, it's, it's a part of like, a, you know, going out in New York city, it's always been the soundtrack in the background at the clubs and, and things like that. So I feel like it is ingrained in me and I was here for, to watch it unfold pretty much. Um, so it, it feels like at this point, like it's our rock and roll, you know? Sure. Um, which is great. Yeah. Well, with, well working with Debbie here, I mean, that kind of came not only full circle once, but now twice because you sang on her record, right? Or like one of the most recent Blondie records. That's right. They asked me to be on Pollinator, which was like unbelievable. That's uh, so cool. How did that? Such like, a great album. Did, yeah, I was going to say, did she come to you and was like, you know, like, did you guys stay kind of in contact? And she was like, hey, yeah, I got so this we, record coming out. We we actually became friends, you know, uh, like 18 years ago or something. And uh, yeah, just always kept in touch. She's, I've always sent her things musically, you know, things that I've been doing because she's always super supportive and, uh, you know, would give me great feedback. And mm -hmm. and same thing with her. She, you know, reached out an email and just was like, you know, I want you to be do a part on this. So um, and she's like, I want you to write your own part. Um, it's a, you know, song about a tall person and a short person in love, <laughs> which was, you know, and it's such a cool, um, track too. I mean, it definitely mm -hmm. has like tight, tight as high vibes. And, uh, it's, it's that uh, the whole album is great. I just, uh -huh. I can't believe I was a part of it <laughs> to be honest. So I think Joan, Joan Jett was the only other person on there. <laughs> That's huge. Um, <laughs> you know, which is so, so crazy. Yeah. Wow. And that's cool that she let you write your own part too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to have She's, that kind uh, of trust in you to say, yeah, I think you, not only would you be a great voice on the record, but I would love to have you, you know, contribute your own, your own, you know, creativity as well. Yeah. Just like too, too much, too generous. Um, but <laughs> she's great like that. And, um, you know, I'm very lucky to have her in my corner and know her. Mm -hmm. um, She's because I, I she is a big part of like what kind of kept me, you know, interested in actually thinking I could pursue music again and, and do that kind of thing. When did you decide to come back? Like, were you always still writing songs, like even after OptiGrav kind of fizzled out? And I mean, I'm sure the Bob's Burger yeah. thing happened and it kind of took over. But yeah, I made I, you know, I would make tracks at home. Um, but they, you know, I, I realize I, I need to work with people because I'm, you know, I'm only capable of doing so much and it was cute, but I, you know, it, it really does make a difference when you work with somebody and they elevate or just add, you know, what they're doing. It's, mm -hmm. it's so much easier. I would have <laughs> given myself that advice. I mean, I, I, I kind of always knew, but I, it's very hard to work with people a lot of times. Um, I did get burned earlier on. So it's, you know, you kind of build up this defensive thing and then, you know, sure. it's, it just takes a while to actually meet the right people. And uh, Bob's also facilitated me being able to do things, you know, um, buy equipment and, and, and spend time working on that, you know, mm -hmm. which is really a luxury there, you know, because of Bob's, I'm able to do all this. Sure. I mean, that's, that's like you said, I mean, you'd really have to have some trust in people. Was it hard to like regain trust? You said you got burned before. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and also it's just much, you know, the, the older you get to, you're, you're in a much more professional environment. You, you know how to be more professional. You don't, you don't start working with friends and, and things like that. Um, you know, it can be, you know, you, you really do want to start off working in a, in a place that's, you know, it's hard to work with friends basically <laughs> uh -huh. sure no I, I i completely see <laughs> and, and junior is definitely my my friend but he's also you know where we have a work thing you know right and uh and it's great it's very mm -hmm. he's very professional to work with that's amazing um, you know when you're in your 20s you're making a track that you know it's going to take like a year to finish or <laughs> you know <laughs> and and we were able to just you know bang out a, a lot of bangers um so the, I, I love working with people like that that are that are good obviously and mm -hmm. and uh are able to follow through was it um 
like what made you want to start releasing songs? Like what was it that with that first, you know, three song EP that you put out that was there something that you were like, you know what, I really, I should just put this out. Well, just, you know, you, you do carry ideas around with yourself and then, uh, you know, it takes years to do them. So mm-hmm. even like that looking track, which I love, you know, and I did the videos kind of uh, a little sexualized and stuff, uh, which was fun. You know, it's kind of like not to Robin Bird and that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, also maybe I thought, you know, I, I'd like to write other music too. That's maybe not as sexual uh, mm-hmm. and uh, more just celebrating dance floor kind of stuff or 80s pop, uh, the 80s pop I grew up with. Sure. When it, when it came to this new album, was that something that you had started, um, you know, due to, due to like the pandemic and you had more time or what, did you have these songs for a while or when, when did this record start to, to, to unfold? Yeah, well, we, uh, we started before the pandemic and then we had, uh, we did have time during the pandemic to go over the tracks and, you know, um, fix stuff that I didn't like and do, do redo stuff or um, add a song. So uh, yeah, lights out. That's, that was the last song we did right before COVID and uh, it was in February last year. So it was kind of getting a little scary. And uh, I just went to LA to do the video for freaks and um, sorry, my <laughs> binging. Um, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, there's um, yeah. So it was, I think we got pretty much everything done right in time. You know, okay. we got everything done right in time for COVID. And uh, if like last year, I was like, oh God, am I ever even going to release these songs? Everything's so depressing, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but now here we are a year later and, you know, much better place. It feels like sure. we're ready to celebrate again. People, you know, obviously need music and to dance and that kind of thing. And it looks like uh, that that could be a possibility here very, very soon as far as the, you know, everything's sort of opening up for, for us here. I know. I know. I'm, I'm in New York City right now. You know, I'm, I'm going to the Bob's movie and uh, it is nice to see the city come back to life um, mm-hmm. because uh, it's been such a horrible year and, you know, it's New York City. Of course, it's going <laughs> to sure. come back to life. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> it's freaking New York over here. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, well, you said so. The, so the song with Debbie Harry was the last song that you wrote for the record. I was. Gonna, I mean, obviously that when you got her on the album because you had a previous relationship, you you were you sang on a Blondie album. Did you did you give her the same you know freedom on the, on your on her side as far as or did you have like a piece that you really thought that she she'd be great at singing? Yeah, me, me and Annabel, uh, Annabel Diaz, who works with me and, and Junior, um, we, we wrote the song and the chorus and just, you know, she came in and just nailed the chorus and uh, mm-hmm. that was it. Um, so, yeah, it was pretty, it's pretty easy and she's so professional and, and cool. And so everyone was starstruck and it was, you know, it was a fun day uh, that I'll never forget. But uh, yeah, this, you know, this time it was more just, writing something for her that was kind of cool and laid back mm-hmm. um fit the song and the vibe and it was great that's great and i love that you have beth from gossip on the record what was yeah, it like? did you have know. yeah did you have a previous relationship with her like how, how why why did you i mean not only is she amazing yes. but like why how did that how did that start like and how'd you get well, her on the album uh, we're Instagram friends, but we also have mutual friends from way back. And uh, she was a fan of my, my YouTube stuff. And, um, you know, we just communicate. And during COVID, I, you know, I was like, do you want to, will you sing a song on my album with me? And she was super, super nice and said yes. <laughs> and then, uh, and then we kind of zoomed her little recording session. She, she went to her friend's house. He had a home studio <clears throat> and, uh, and she laid down her stuff and then junior worked on it during COVID. So that oh. actually was the last song we did. <laughs> oh, cool. well, what was it like, it. like uh, working over zoom like that? Obviously different. Yeah. You know, obviously I want to be in the studio and 
it's a, it's so great. I love being in the studio and being there for long hours and bonding and having, you know, really trying to squeeze out whatever you can. And, uh, but it was still awesome. I was still like so excited that she was even doing the track. So, uh, it was, it was cool. I was, I was excited to hear what junior was going to do. And, uh, and her voice is just so awesome. So it's just, it brings such a, you know, so much power to the album with her to have her on it. Sure. Yeah. I remember I was, I do, I've done radio for a long time and I remember hearing when gossip put out heavy cross and when that record came out, I was just like, who is this? Like, this is so, <laughs> this is insane. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's super talented. Yeah, I love I can't female wait. voices too. So, you know, um, it's nice to have strong, such strong female voices uh-huh. on the album. Yeah, totally. And you have baby daddy as well from Scissor sisters. I was gonna say you, you, you said you played with, with them when you, when you were in uh, your other band. Well, we would do, yeah, we would do uh, shows and they would be, and, you know, we'd play the same nights kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've known them for years, you know, Baby Daddy and Jake and, um, you know, the Baby Daddy I love. It's, he, you know, we did two tracks. Um, I also put Here It Comes, which I, I think I, we're going to add to the remix. We're going to do a remix album and then add that as well. But uh, the tracks that he did are great. He's, he's such an uh, easygoing guy to work with. And I would just go go to his home studio and do do things there, um, and it happened at a really natural pace. And he's uh, super talented. He he can actually work by himself. He he plays a lot of instruments, and oh, okay. um, I mean he he's a really great musician too. That's amazing. Um, with the record is coming out very soon here. Uh, do you do you have plans June as 4th, far? Right? Yeah, June fourth. And do you have plans June to 4th. tour the fourth tour the album? Year. <laughs> Fourth of June. Yeah, you know, I, I'd love to, I don't know about this album because, you know, uh, I think this album is going to be the one that hopefully gets people to, you know, find my music and, and get into it. Hopefully, you know, enjoy the songs, have a little private time with them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then come see me live. But I, I want to start playing as soon as possible. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm hoping obviously people like it. So, <laughs> yeah, I think it's an incredible record. Do you, what oh, about, thank like, you. Did you do any of those like live stream things with it or kind of stay away from that? Yeah. You know, I'd like to do a live stream from my garage, but not right now. Um, you know, I, I think we're, cause we're starting to get out again, you know, maybe it's time to figure out, you know, when a live show would happen, but yeah, like uh, a release party of sorts yeah yeah i think so something something uh to celebrate the album for sure um but uh you know once again it's it's still it's such a weird time everything's slowly opening up so uh you know it's all gonna be online most likely for now Mm -hmm. um but all all of my social media john roberts fun i you know i'll i'll post all the shows and anything as soon as you know i book anything I'll, i'll let people know i'm my socials <laughs> sure. and somebody needs to call Zuckerberg up because for some reason you're not verified on, on Instagram. And I, and I was baffled. By it's that. shocking. It I is know. shocking. You know what I, but you know what I do though? I guess this is against the Instagram rules and post pictures of, you know, that images that are, that aren't mine, you know, movies oh. and things like that. So I think that's, <laughs> They gotta they stick to the rules. About like that? Us. Weird. Yeah. That's... You're yeah. It's, it is weird. Um, so uh, you know, what are you going to do? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. But I was so, like, whoa, that's so I bizarre <laughs> that he's not verified. It is. What a I world tried. we're in. I, I, it's, you know, it's all so stupid. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's funny. But well, dude, the, thank you so much, John, for doing this. I really appreciate thank it, man. You. It's cool to hear your, your musical journey. And uh, obviously, very successful with Bob's Burgers. I can't wait until that movie comes out. That's going to be incredible. My, me and my five-year-old son watch it constantly. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah, we're hoping, you know, next year when everyone's able to go to the theater, because we wanted to make a movie and we already have a TV show. So sure. we want everyone to get dressed up and go and have fun. But it's, it's you know, I'm, I'm finishing it up right now. Um, and it's great. It's I really it. great. I do have one more question for you. I want to know if you have, uh, and this could be for musicians, for for actors, for anything, artists, just any artists in general. Do you have any advice 
for aspiring artists? I'm sorry, do I have any what? Advice <laughs> for aspiring artists? Oh. Yes, uh, you know, just don't take no for an answer and uh, keep um, performing as much as you can. Do uh, work with, try to try to work with good people, professional environment, and uh, work on your work on your art as much as you can. That's that's how you get good. Yeah.